Hello and welcome to the next lesson in the advanced C Sharp course brought to you by your friends here at Tuts Plus. Now this lesson is going to cover one of the nice to have features that was added to the C Sharp language in order to get rid of a lot of the unnecessarily redundant overloaded methods that you have to write in certain instances where you don't necessarily know all of the values for the parameters when you're going through your code. So let's go ahead and jump into some code and I'll show you exactly what I mean by optional parameters. Alright, so here we are in Visual Studio. I'm going to create a new project. Once again, I'm going to create a console application and click OK. So now let's go ahead and work through a small, simple example that's going to show you exactly what optional parameters are, how they work, and how they can benefit you in your code. So let's say I was working with a particular method. It was rather simple. It's a static method. It returns a void, and it's called print data. Now, when I was writing this, this method, I knew that I wanted to pass in three pieces of data because I knew what the base functionality of this method was, so I just kind of stubbed it out like this, string, first name, string, last name, and int age. So I was going to pass in some pieces of data about a person and simply print them out to the console. So I did a console write line and just did a little bit of formatting here. The first parameter followed by the second parameter is third parameter years old. There we go. And then I'm going to pass in first name, last name and age. So this, once again this is quite simple, nothing too out of the ordinary here. And then from my main method I can simply call this data since it's static. I can say print data and then I can pass in John for the first name, Doe for the middle or for the last name and 35 for the age. And when I do that and hit control F5 I get John Doe is 35 years old on the console just as you would expect from this basic console write line application. Well, what happens if you have to do some modifications to your code and all of a sudden in a particular branch of your code, you may not have all of these pieces of data, first name, last name, and age. So how would you typically handle that in the past? Or how would I typically handle that in the past? Well, really all I would do is I would create another overloaded method that would only take in the arguments at that time that I knew I had. So I would do something like this, static void print data and let's say I knew the first and last name but I didn't necessarily know the age so I would do string first name string last name and I wouldn't pass in an age because I didn't know it so then I would just take this method and merely call the other method and pass in the data that I knew for sure which was first name and last name and then the age I didn't really know it so I would give it some sort of default value so let's just say zero for this case and then we'll save this. And now I have two overloaded instances of this method, one that takes the age and one that doesn't. So if I get rid of this age here, this is still going to build. And then I can go ahead and run this. And you can see here that John Doe is zero years old. So you can see I called one of my overloaded methods here. I didn't necessarily know what the age was. So I sent in some default value. So I could change that default value to anything I wanted as long as it f fell within the range of an integer value. Well, so now what if I came into another branch in my code and I didn't know what another parameter was going to be, so I had to do static void, and let's say in this case I only knew what the first name was going to be, so I did a string first name and nothing else because I didn't know what anything else was going to be. And then once again I would do the same thing, I would call my main print data that has the actual functionality in it, and I would pass in first name and then a few default values, so we'll say null and zero. And we'll save that. And now we're only passing in John, so I can call that version of the overload and say save, control F5, and now we're getting John blank because I passed in a null is zero years old. So as you can see here, this gets kind of cumbersome and a little bit redundant, so you could go through any sort of combination of these parameters and continue to write overloads for these. And once again, it becomes rather cumbersome and a rather nightmare to maintain until we were given the gift of optional parameters. And so how do optional parameters help us in this situation and, and really what are they? Well, it's quite simple actually. So if we start by writing this method again, so let's go ahead and, and comment all of this out. So I'll highlight everything and hit control K, control C to comment everything. Now I'm going to start writing the same method signature again. Static void, print data, and now this time it's going to change just ever so slightly. So let's say that in this case I always knew I was going to get a first name. And that first name was going to be the first parameter. So I could do just as I did before, string first name, no big deal there. But now let's say that 
I didn't always know if I was going to be getting a last name or an age. So in this case, those two needed to be optional parameters. And the way that we specify those is within the method signature, we give the type of the parameter, we give the name just as we did before, and then we give an equal sign and then give it the default value that the compiler is going to assign to that parameter if one isn't provided to it. So in this case, we'll say that the default value is null, just like we did in our third example down here, our third overload, and the same with the integer value. So we have an int age, and if I don't know what it is, I'm going to give it a default value of zero. So now that I have this, I can write my code as I normally would before, and I'm just going to copy this from the previous example, my console right line, and paste this in. And now I'm going to save this. Now, notice that I did not change the method call that I was using in my example before, and I'm going to do a Control-Shift-B to build, and everything succeeds. And now if I just run this, Control-F5, you're going to see once again John blank, because the default is, z is null, is zero years old. So let's take a look at this a little bit closer. So if I were to get rid of the parentheses in the argument to my print data method here in main and open up the parentheses and take a look at the IntelliSense you're gonna see here that string first names look looks the same as it did before but the last two parameters last name and age look a little bit different they have some square brackets around them signifying that these are truly optional parameters and it also shows what their defaults are should, if you did not actually specify one so in the case of last name it's null and age is zero that seems fairly simple. It's a fairly simple concept to understand, but there are a couple little gotchas, and one of the main ones is that it's okay to have optional parameters, but if you have a required parameter, which in this case is string first name, all of your required parameters need to be listed first in your method signature, and only optional parameters, parameters can come after them. So let's see what I'm talking about. So if I undo here and put John back in here, and now let's say that I named the first name parameter equal to null and made this one default as well and save this and build, this will work just fine. So I could call my print John method here, and you will still get John blank is zero years old. Okay, that's not a big deal, but like I said before, all of your required parameters need to be listed first within your signature. So if I tried to remove this null, this default value from last name, and I save and do a control shift B to build, you'll see here that optional parameters must appear after all required parameters. So you need to make sure that you remember to put all of your required parameters in the front of your signature. So in order for us to get this back working again, we're going to go ahead and, and have to specify that this is an optional parameter once again and give it its default value. So now I can rebuild this and it works. I can run it and we work just fine. Now the other little got you that there is a little bit of a workaround, but you still have to understand it as well, is that when I'm calling the print data method with optional parameters, I do need to specify these in order because some of them are optional and you really have to follow the signature in order for the compiler to be able to map these values to their appropriate parameters within the method signature. So if I wanted to maintain first name, last name, and age, I could simply do John, I could do Doe, and I could do 35, and I could expect this to work, Control Shift B, and then Control F5 to run, and it does work, but now let's say I decided I didn't know the last name parameter and I just wanted to pass in John and 35. Now if I try to build this you're going to see it won't build because it can't map the supplied parameters to a method signature. So that's because that even though these are optional you do have to specify them in order. Now there is a little trick to get around this in that if you know what the name of the parameter is that you're trying to get to by skipping one in particular, so in this case, I want to specify the first name, I want to skip over the last name, and I want to assign the third parameter, you can use what's called named parameters to skip over the ones that you don't want to use so that the compiler knows what parameter to give that value you're specifying. And the way that you do named parameters is quite simple as well. So in your call to that method, you actually give the name of the parameter. In this case, I want to pass age as 35. And now I can save this and build. And it will once again build. And now it will use the first name that I'm specifying, in this case, 
John, it will use the default value for last name because I didn't specify a parameter, and it will take the age that I passed it, which in this case is 35. So if I do a control F5, you'll see John blank, so D, uh, null is the default value, is 35 years old. And you could do that for all of these. So you can always specify the name if you want. It's not always necessary. So I could always say first name, John, last name, Doe, and then age 35. This is absolutely valid. These are just called named parameters. If you know the names, you can do this. They are filled in by the compiler for you if you don't specify them, as long as you match the signature of the method you're trying to call. But if you ever have the instance in here, like I said, where you want to skip over a parameter, say in this case the last name, I could definitely do that, but you have to use named parameters for everything after the parameters that you know. So in this case, once again, I know I want to pass in John so the compiler can figure out that John is the first parameter here. But since I'm not passing a string to map to last name and I want to pass the age, I need to use the age named parameter. So I can do control F5 once again and it works as expected. So there you go. That's a little introduction to optional and named parameters. I think they're very cool because like I said, it really allows me to skip a lot of this extra fluff and overloaded methods and it's a lot less code for me to maintain and write and ultimately that's what I enjoy about features of C Sharp and the .NET Framework. I'll see you in the next lesson.